the Nick your South Dakota yes, State. Yes, I know. Uh, we, we... Now, from across the Tri-State, this is KHQA Sports. An 11-game win streak, unprecedented program momentum, and revenge for last year's Summit League Tournament Championship game loss. All of that was on the line tonight for Western Illinois with the Jackrabbits in town. Huge crowd in tonight. As I mentioned, over 4,100 best crowds since Indiana was here a couple of years ago. Good start for Western. In fact, they built an early six-point lead. Terrell Parks, the big fella, doing what he does. At the other end, Tony Fagan going to answer. He, too, a big fella from the top of the key. That three, or actually long two would go, but Western kept answering. Ciola Clark right here for three. His only field goal of the game, though, and that would be problematic late in this one. Nate Walters, point guard extraordinaire. Four NBA teams in the house tonight looking at him. Beautiful finger roll at the other end for Walters as he finishes. Still Western building the lead. Offensive rebound. There's Terrell Parks, who was unstoppable yet again tonight in the low blocks. But Walters would answer, and his team, late in the first half, starts to build a little momentum. Still, Western kept attacking in this one. Jack helped have yourself a game. Had 16 points, triples galore in this ball game. Then later, it's Adam Link attacking and banking one home at that point. Western's last lead for a little bit of a while because, uh, actually, Mike Ochorobio going to have a nice play on the interior here. Too much of Nate Walters in this game towards the end of the first half. Another breakaway at this point for the Jackrabbits as Walters helps his team build a five-point lead at the half. Western hangs around. The lead never got any more than about four points either way, but in the second half, Western really couldn't close, and the big problem there, four of 13 from the charity stripe. Western loses. That 11-game win streak is over. 59-53 to 53 was your final. Let's talk about some better news. Well, not right off the bat. Culver Stockton taking on Central Methodist on the road and losing in overtime tonight. The Cats now fall to 5-3 and three in conference play. They've hit a little bit of a slow patch of late. The better news is that Quincy University got off the schneid. They get a win tonight on the road in Rolla, 62-57. to 57. Do the Hawks. How about the Western Illinois women on the road tonight in Brookings, South Dakota? The Jacks off to their best start in Summit League play ever. They're 13 and 5 as well. Western Illinois, though, attacking early. Rebecca Henriksen driving hard into the lane, getting the bucket. She banks it home, but the visitors were down by five. And then Ashley Eady taking it in strong right there. The Jackrabbits had way too much for Western tonight. And they hand JD Gravina's squad, which has been hot of late, particularly at home, not so much on the road. The lost night. Western goes down to defeat in this one. 86 to 57. Other news on the women's docket tonight. Quincy University, their win streak is over and in ugly fashion as the Lady Hawks lose one at Missouri S&T. 74 to 53 is your final in that ball game. Also, I had Culver Stockton, a loser to Central Methodist, 80 to 65 was your final in that ball game. We also have HLG winning in overtime over William Baptist, 62 to 60. Let's move on to boys high school basketball. Tony Lenzini Invitational. It's dance moms lived out in reality. That can't be good in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Palmyra and Clark County going at it in this one. Clark County on the attack. The underdogs. Luke Ross is having none of that talk. Great take for the big fella. Although Palmyra about to come back and come back strong. Trevor Many right here with the steal, the larceny, the layup, the felony, and the finger roll at the other end. And then Jordan not going to make his presence felt as Palmyra trying to win on the home court, take advantage of the home cooking and look good. As uh, you will see right there, not going to free himself up and knock down the open jumper for two. But you know what? Clark County's big fellas, they were upset minded tonight, and it showed. Going to start you off with Luke Ross crashing the board. Those two big defensive ends from the football team making a big, big splash night. Not only Luke Ross, but Kyle Kovar off the Ross miss. Clark County, the big fellas, Palmyra had no answer. Palmyra doesn't have a lot of height, and that really served them poorly tonight against those two big guys as it was the Ross and Corver show. Look at Ross, though. Up top, high post center at this point, knocking down the long one. And in overtime tonight, Clark County pulls off the upset. They always play well at the Lanzini. They're going on to take on Canton in the championship game. Final on this one in overtime, 74-82 to in favor of Clark County. Other boys scores tonight, a smattering of them, if you will. Moberly beats Macon at the Macon tournament. Look at Sal Shelby, a winner tonight, nicely over Centralia, 58-56 to was your final there. Also, the North Shelby tournament, speaking of upsets, North Shelby heading on to the championship game as they 
they knock off Marion County 40 to 34. Up next for them, Knox County. Palmyra Bowling Green, not a good night for the host team. The, the boys and girls dancing in the stands. They wouldn't have reason to dance for long. As Bobby Spoonster's team going to work in this one. Caitlin McLean, have yourself a ball game. She did it all tonight for her team. Palmyra trying to come back. Megan Hooper right here with a beautiful bucket. Too much, though, of Kelsey Schurter and company as Bowling Green wins. Schurter with 17, and Bowling Green's going on to the championship game as they get the big win, 57-36. to 36. All of the rest of your girls' scores coming up tonight at uh, connecttristates.com, as well as some wrestling scores. We're all out of time. All right, very good. We'll be back with, back with a look at weather after this.